in the early 19th century, a renowned violin soloist and pedagogue was emerging who would write a treatise like no other. This is that treatise. This is Pierre Bayot. When he was 10, he saw the great Italian violinist Giovanni Battista Viotti perform in Paris. And he must have been really good, because this is what inspired Bio to study the violin. He lived from 1771 to 1842, and he lived in France. He actually became one of the three pillars of the French violin school. The other two were Rode and Kreutzer, if you can't quite read that. He became so good at his profession that he was warmly welcomed by Beethoven and Haydn. One time at a performance, Paganini came and shook his hand on stage to show his admiration. Bio was widely known for his technique, style, musicianship, and his ability to move an audience. He also really liked chamber music. If you're still not impressed... Let me tell you that Bio was the third person to perform Beethoven's violin concerto in public. Um, in public. Alright, let me just... Yeah, there we go. Perfect. And the first one to play it in France. And after all of that, he's best known for his treatise, The Art of the Violin. This treatise is well known for being super in-depth. It has lots of explanations and lots of examples to go along with those and things that students can do with their teachers. It's a fun read. Today, I'm going to cover these topics from the treatise. When starting to play the violin, place yourself facing the music stand at a distance of about 21.31 to 22.38 inches. The left foot should be at a perfect right angle to the music stand and the right foot on the same line but placed naturally as you can see. The violin should rest on the collarbone and be held against the neck. Remember to keep your shoulders back and your chest open. Use all of your fingers to support the bow, place them on the stick, and round the hand naturally. Warning alert! Do not rush the progress of a student by fatiguing them with studies too advanced for them. Bio includes many preparatory exercises like open string work or lifting and tapping or variations in bowing. Bio's book is a good resource for teachers and students alike, and even better when they work together. On page 75, Bio admits, when we speak of scales, the first idea to present itself is a kind of torture. But then he goes on to explain how scales are the basis of a musical system. He believes that if you practice your scales every day, the violinist will have security and correctness that can only be brought about through scales. While you're doing scales, you should vary your bow strokes, you should do scales of different intervals, and while you're at it, do some arpeggios and broken scales. And maybe one day, you'll be able to play your scales like this. Let's talk about the bow. Bio divides it into three equal sections. The frog is where the strength comes from. Chords and accents are often played here. Bio calls the middle of the bow the center of expression. This is where the bow breathes and where violinists can get a really sweet sound. He didn't say much about the tip except that it's good for soft sounds and it, that's where notes can naturally die off. Warning alert! Bio warns about focusing too much on the rules of where and how to use the bow because it will stifle feelings and the musicality of the performer. 
The four strings of the violin are the E string, A string, D string, and G string. Each of these strings has a natural and an imitative character. The E string's natural character is that of a soprano, and its imitative character is that of a piccolo. The A string also has a natural character of soprano, but can imitate instruments like the flute, oboe, and musette. The D string is where we get into the lower tones. It has a natural alto voice, and it can also imitate the flute pretty well. The G string is the tenor voice, and it imitates the horns and trumpets pretty well. Bio specifies three types of fingerings. The first is the most secure fingering, where it's consistent and it's in the same position. The second is the easiest fingering for small hands. And finally, the third type of fingering is expressive fingering, where you can highlight characteristics of the composer or add in glissandos and things like that to really add something special to your performance. pretty good job covering some of the topics in a treatise that is over 500 pages. The table of contents has lots of other chapters that we didn't touch on like nuances and musical punctuation, ornamentation, and he even writes out a ton of cadenzas basically just to prove that he can. Definitely give it a look. It'll brighten your day. Bye! I'll see you tonight. Bye. Do one when you're ready.